Hi again! We are back! And we are playing World's Dawn. As we have done many times before. And we will continue to do so in the future. Many times in the future. Many, many times in the future. Should definitely remember, this is the kind of thing I can easily forget when we get talking to, you know, in our long mm -hmm, conversations mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. E3 or Mass Effect or whatever Zelda we talk about. Um, yeah, gotta make sure we have enough barn fodder, gotta make sure we've got enough Adoption. doggy chow, fish for our kitty friends. Ooh, Bagel's in a great mood great today. Mood. That's good, that's good. good. To hear. <laughs> Yeah, you got a lot of money. Yeah. You're not spending that today, maybe? I think we're going to spend some money today. Um, <laughs> I think what we could buy, perhaps top of my list, is donating some to the town hall yeah. and then purchasing that chicken. I, th I, I would agree with that. I think yeah. that's what we need to do. And then maybe enough uh, seeds to fill out the rest of our plot as well. Yeah. So I would agree with that. I think I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Actually, what we could, oh no, I was thinking we could send Bo on an errand, but uh, not. But during, it is raining. Yeah, not during a rainy day, so we'll have to do them all ourselves, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I can definitely attest to the fact that I don't think Bo would like doing too much <laughs> in the rain. So, not a fan of the rain. It's more confused by it than anything else. So, <laughs> what is this strange? Like water's not supposed I to be this guy. Like it. Can I go back inside, please? <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. My dog Coda is like, the worse the weather, the happier he is. For some reason, <laughs> I'm having a hard time whenever it's like, you know, really hot or sunny outside. We've got to wait until pretty late or go pretty early in the day to take him for a walk. Otherwise, he just like drags behind on the leaf. <laughs> He's got black fur, which probably yeah, doesn't help. Toasty. He absorbs a lot of the sun, sunshine. Do, 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 do. I had a question I was thinking for you that might be fun to kind of talk about. Um, so we've talked a lot about how, uh, I mean, this is a developer Let's Play. I made Worlds Dawn. Um, you did? I did. Whoa. Yeah. This game that we're playing, that was me. I made it. Uh, you, you know, I'm sorry. That was that was like really sarcastic. Like, <laughs> no, like this is this is a big deal, and and I don't mean to undermine that. I, that was that was me being a, a smart no no. I asked this question because I honestly don't know if I could answer it myself because I've done like when I made this game and when I'm making a story beside it's it's I'm doing like almost every part of it myself. Sure. So I would ask you if you I know you have a passion for games. You have a passion for like creative work. Mm -hmm, I've mm -hmm. played through some of your own stories myself. I've had the pleasure. Uh, if you could work on a game, or you know, if you could work as under like a big developer or something, what would your dream like job within the game industry mm. be? Like, what would you be? You know, a scenario designer? Would you be somebody who comes up with like concepts of mechanics? Would you be? Um, oh, this yeah, this is a this is a interesting. And a uh, fairly complex question. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to pretend to be an industry expert because I'm not even in the industry. So I can't pretend like I know each and every job or function. But I like the sort of, like, idea of, like, um, on the more micro scale of, like, you know, what engages people. What, you know, it, it's, it's, it's one thing to have, like, you know, a great storyline, but like, you know, what sets a game, like, the difference between a game and a movie, you know, they both, you know, should have good storylines, you know, cinematics and stuff, and it's like, the appeal, like, ever since I was young, obviously, with, like, games, is like, it's the fusion between story, environment, and just, I guess, fun, I can't think of a, a better word, but yeah. like, like, I like... Always thinking like game feel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know that kind of thing, and and so like designing the fun behind a game. Yeah. Like, whether that be like mechanics or or things of engagement or little things here and there, like uh, and I don't even have like a a, a great example, but like uh, you know I've, I'm on the the the, the uh, Breath of the Wild sequel team, and you know I'm given a job. You know I'd love to do like 
like enemy designs, like the sort of like AI of their behavior, you know, to make yeah. interesting interactions, or you know, let me design some crafting like recipes, you know, like let me design some some of the materials you can find and where to find them, you know, let me uh, let me tell how much damage this sword does and and you know and you know randomize it a little bit and you know like I like I like that kind of stuff you know yeah yeah that would if fall it, under I don't know if that's a great answer somewhere. no no yeah. absolutely that's yeah that's super interesting and yeah like the the because I I love the fun behind games and and I feel like I feel like making that fun for other people would be where I would want to be if I was in the industry yeah awesome I really like that answer no that's a great answer um, there's the, there's a the classic example of, and it's kind of a weird and, and outdated example maybe, but uh, it, the legend goes Shigeru Miyamoto, you know, biggest game developer, game designer on the planet, um, was talking to like a student who was showing off a like vampire game, right? And the uh, student basically had it so where you pressed a button and you sucked somebody's blood, right? You like latched on and you sucked somebody's blood with the press of the A button and Miyamoto suggested like instead of pressing the button to suck the blood line the mechanics of the game and like the the physical inputs of the game up with what you're doing on screen a little bit better and that's kind of like the Nintendo magic that you don't necessarily think of but like so press the button to maybe like bite down and then release the button to actually like so there's like a little more of engagement, a, there. engagement, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a little more tie between like what you're doing as a player and what the character is doing on the screen. Even though it is still, of course, like a fantastical representation, it's not like a one-to-one. -one, you know, this input equals this action, but making that a little more fun, I think, that gives a lot of Nintendo games like the extra little touch that they have, where. They're just fun to play, and yeah, it's hard to put yeah. your finger on it. <laughs> you know, well, there's, like... There's... And, it does, and it doesn't matter, sorry, it doesn't matter, like, what you're doing. Yeah. Like, you could be, at, like, think about, like, a Mario Party game where mini games range from, like, the most ridiculous, like, it's milking a like, cow like, to, like, rolling around on a Yeah, like, your controller's or, vibrating. Like, Push the button when it does, and it's yeah. just, like, something as simple as that mechanic is... Yeah, it can of, be fun forever, yeah. like... Yeah, so... Yeah. I think, I think that sort of person of, you know, thinking of, of how to make, maybe you're not coming up with the broad concept of what the game is, but like how to translate that in an enjoyable way to the player. I mean, there's so many different like ways of having fun and I really wish I had a smarter word than just fun, but like, <laughs> you know, like you, you could take like any game premise and there's some sort of fun behind it, you know, it's like, uh... I mean, you know, like Breath of the Wild, the exploration, the you know, you know, the combat. There's so many different types of, of fun in, in Breath of the Wild, and and then you have the more like the the uh, like the Mass Effects, you know, choices, combat, all of this and that. And oh man, I just yeah, so much to it. Um, okay, so we thought of spice names, yeah, right, for yeah. smaller animals. Yeah. Do you have any ideas off the top of your head? <sighs> I was gonna defer to you on this one. <laughs> Hmm. You know, uh, my last suggestion of Allspice all really spice. went over well with your fans, I think. I kind of like don't all do spice. <laughs> uh, well, well, So we, 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 got, do, we got nutmeg. Yeah, we've got nutmeg. So, we could do, like, hmm. cinnamon or, like... Cinnamon's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> chives. I'm thinking of, like, all kinds uh, of weird ones. Do, uh... Do, uh, like... Uh, curry. No. Curry. curry. I was gonna say curry, but, like... I like curry. Yeah, That's a good like, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, curry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not Megan Curry. Not Megan Curry. Those are yeah, great for our first I like chicken. It. Yep, it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Thanks for asking. All right, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Chickens are expensive. Chickens are expensive. We did buy a bunch of seeds as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That two thousand coins went fast. Yeah. But, you know, you, you still got a little bit to spare. We do. Packs to the store or for whatever, you know, donate. I think we should definitely make a sizable donation. Yeah, I think so too. I think perhaps we can check out Paxel's store and then, depending on what he's got, maybe decide how, how big of a donation we want to make this time around. Um, seems like a reasonable way to move forward. And as much as I want to buy more cosmetic stuff for our house, you know, we still don't have a stereo system to play different music. Mm -hmm, we still mm -hmm. don't really have much art to put on the walls. I think we maybe should wait a little bit longer 
before we do that. Yeah, we, when you think about it, you know, this is only the second season. True. So. We've got a lot of time to make our farm exactly what we want it to be. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see, when does the, the tavern opens at 2? I believe Paxel's already set. Uh, he might already be set up at 2, but we might have to wait a little bit. Actually. Just pop in and see yeah. if he's there. Yeah, see if he's there. Rainy day, of course, we're going to find one or two <laughs> friendly faces at the victory. I, li I like the the thought of, of, like, you know, just the bakery being, like, also, like, the cafe, you know, where, you know, yeah. the tavern isn't quite open yet, yeah. but... Yeah, these two next door to each other are definitely popular hangout spots. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair, it's like, it's funny to watch people. <laughs> I was actually maybe going to check. Uh, See if he's got some dumplings. He does he have got some dumplings. dumplings. Yeah. Ooh, for in case we run into the Rose Rider yeah. again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do I it. Mean, I think you should do it. Okay. You know, in my mind, like, real, here's some real world advice. You should always have some savory dumplings on you, just in case. And if you happen to get hungry and eat them. Yeah, you know. Get more, because you should always have some on you. Like... You know, I don't have them here, but I brought some savory dumplings myself. <laughs> I bag. live by that advice. Yeah. Know? I just, I always, you know, you see me on the street, I'm going to have savory dumplings. You just say, hey, Mike, you got your dumplings? We're like, sure do, buddy. <laughs> yeah, have one. It's not quite open yet. But I, lo I love the idea of having, like, a an emergency bag with, like, a first aid kit with, you know, maybe, like, a bottle of water, dumplings. like, band-aids, and then just and yeah, some, some dumplings. savory dumplings yeah. just yeah. in case. <laughs> Your desert island bag. Yeah. Gotta have those dumplings. Mm. Those would be a hard one to acquire on the island. Like once you're on that desert yeah. island. Oh, there's a lot of steps tough. involved before <laughs> you can be eating some dumplings. <laughs> Alexander's problem. Yeah, I like <laughs> just the goofiest like down to home and problems. You know that screwdriver is just sitting like it, right it's it's his, like, like in his right back pocket yeah. or something <laughs> behind his ear. Maybe like mom's like hiding it or something. <laughs> I could also see that for sure. She seems the type. <laughs> well, okay. I said we were gonna check out Paxil's shop first, but maybe let's go donate just a little bit. And then we know Paxel's gonna be here for at least a couple days, so if we've gotta yeah, save yeah, up yeah. for one or two things, we can do that. So we'll head on over to the town hall. Feeling I'll write a big old check. Yeah, feeling pretty generous today. Well, you know, I mean I feel like you you did a donation before. It was just a little bit. You got yeah. a little bit uh, you got a little bit of money to spare and you do. It may or may not be tied to some in game mechanic, but you know, we're not it's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because because Prophet is a good person. I'm generous. Let's do You know what I always do? I will always like donate down to the nearest hundred. So I would give three hundred fifty five in order to make sure that I'm at like that nearest hundred or fifty like fifty Let's do it. The 10th place. Yep. I didn't even like notice exactly how much we had, so yeah. Perfect. So that when you go through the like, boom, now you have that clean one it's clean. Yeah, that yeah, UI that's what I looks do. so slick. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can before you buy a calendar yourself, you can always check check mm. it out here in the town hall. You Give know, a little bit of time before we need to save up again. Looking at what you got coming up, the Firelight Festival and the Lockball Bash. Man, I think uh I think you're gonna be you're you're gonna be set for the lockball bash for sure. We like, haven't done a, t a whole lot of lockballing. We there's some stats you can level up, and we haven't done too much of that. But um, I am a fairly skilled you, lockball player. I would say player. more than fairly skilled. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I heard there's a tough secret opponent at the mm. end of that tournament. No Just packages. Like to run around to the other side to actually <laughs> say hello. <laughs> Quiet day at the post office. I'll have you know, we're showing a lot of restraint because I do know all the secret codes that could give us a boost in, in coin if you put them in at the post office. Yeah, but you know, like, uh, 
there's 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 you know it's like for for me it's like like there's 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 playing the game for like you know yourself and like if if you're you know doing a little bit of cheating like you're only cheating yourself true yes. that being said there are some definitely awesome cheat codes that i <laughs> live and swear by back in the day like uh what i'm trying to think my my favorite cheat code of all time uh i have to buy the ashen mask yeah i was so gonna say we'll, you definitely we'll come need back that. with a little more money definitely need that not to interrupt your you know, oh, uh, Nintendo 64, mm -hmm. GoldenEye, mm -hmm. DK mode. I was going to say, big That heads. is one of my absolute <laughs> favorite cheat codes. It adds literally, like, no game yeah. benefits. It's just big heads, yep. long arms. And yep. for whatever reason, like, I can't picture what the characters look like normally. <laughs> because they, like, I just always That's play so with DK true. mode. That like, is so true. Like, in my head, when I think of that game, everybody has a giant Because I just remember me and my brothers, like, we'd be playing like multiplayer like slappers only and everybody has this slappers giant head only. and arms and it's just no odd job pure chaos. Right? no odd job no no, no. absolutely not You're no odd job no he's you banned can, you can use cheat codes but if you use odd job that is he's a step banned too far. <laughs> uh good times yeah you know you know, banned you know obviously from competitive play but you know you counterpick facility and you can take care of Ajahn, no problem. <laughs> You've got the pro strats. The pro strats, yeah. For a 20-year-old 20, 20 game. Hey, Sage Glob! Hey. Gosh, more than 20 years. Ugh. <laughs> 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 what is thou calleth home? I believe we live in Willow Creek. You know, it's actually an interesting question, because if you don't look at the map, you might not actually know what your region necessarily is That's called. True. So this this is actually a, a really good question. And you know, even like you think about it like West Village, you're like, well, you know, you're maybe more towards the north, but maybe You are west of the west. Maybe that could yeah. be like breezy meadow. It's like, well, you know, it's kind of a meadow. Maybe it's breezy. Yeah. So it's like those are that's an interesting and uh, even question. like breezy meadow has a creek running through it. And yeah. like Willow Creek has a meadow, you know? It's like This is a good. tricky sage lab. 80 coins! Ooh, man, we can almost yeah, I was gonna say, look at that. that mask today. <laughs> Send them back into like the ground. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, you probably, you might be able to do it. <laughs> Which is good, because you need bait anyway, so. True. It's really a win-win. Um, okay, here we go. Pro strats, talking about pro strats. Let's go do some part-time work at the uh, gallery, because that's still open until 9, and then we can run down... His shop should still be open. I think so. Tavern. Yeah. As long as Amber is willing to let us do some work. Hey, All right. Nice. Well, while you're working and slaving away, I think your fans got another question for you. If All you're right. For it. Yeah, let's All right. It. So, uh, YouTube comment, uh, DeBayleaf, again. Yeah, DeBayleaf. <laughs> Welcome back again. Uh, in one of the earlier titles, uh, more slash Friends of Mineral Town, if you were married for 60 years, you, uh, you'd unlock a house in the mountain. Since both of you like games that have an in-game calendar, how do you feel about events that require this kind of longevity? Do you think it changes how a person might play this type of game? Great question. Great question. I had no idea about that. 60 I know. <laughs> years? In, wow. <laughs> that, that's absolutely insane. That is absolutely insane. I can't imagine very many, like, I, when you can see, like, the back end of how many people, or, like, achievements, where you can see the back end of how many people who bought a game, like, yeah. actually finish it or get to, like, even, like, the 50% mark, you know? Uh, it, it's shocking to me that, like, I, that must be a tiny, tiny fraction of players that ever that's saw that House yeah. in the Mountains. Um, but I love that, man. Oh, yeah. I love rewarding your most devoted, you know, fans like that. That is an incredible commitment to to developing something like that. And especially if you're not going to take too, too much time making it, you know? Like, if you just basically, like, copy and paste the house here and here, and it's, like, this really cool, fun, cosmetic Easter egg at the end, in the end game, essentially. I, I love that stuff. That is... I, so cool. Yeah, and you know, I'm of the similar opinion. I, I, I'm maybe more pragmatic and like, I, I, I need there to be incentive all the way up to. Yeah. It can't be like the same thing for just like, you know, a set amount of time and then, you know, reward after that. I like to be engaged the whole time. I think about uh, uh, Super Mario World. Great example. Like, you get your main game, but like, you can go to the Star World. And then yeah. from Star World, there's Special World. It's yeah. like the, a linear... 
series of, I think it's like 10 levels, and they're the hardest levels. Mm-hmm. They're the absolute hardest levels. Mm-hmm. And if you get all the way through, you get a, like a color palette change and some sprite changes yeah. at, at, you know, for Super Mario World at the end of it. And it's like, it's it's just a little tiny thing, but the sense of accomplishment yeah. that you get for going all of this hard way, which, again, it's not part of like the main game technically, because, yeah. you know, you don't need to go to Special World at all to go to Bowser's Castle and win. It's this little side piece with increased difficulty, and then you get this little tiny mm-hmm. thing at the end. And like, it does that's it. the kind of longevity thing that I love. There you go, Strange Goop. Hey! Uh, hey! hey! Strange Goop! <laughs> Strange Goop! Strange Goop! Strange Goop! Uh, yeah, yeah, and it doesn't ruin anything. I think it's important not to make normal players, I guess, feel like they're missing out on anything. Oh, right? yeah. Like, it's just a palette swap. So at the end of the day, it doesn't change the gameplay, it doesn't change anything drastically. But man, for the people that are committed to doing that, not only is it super fun to get all the way there and like a little bit of a, you know, like bragging rights oh, yeah. of, of showing off your your Mario at the end. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Breath of the Wild, I'm of, I'm of two minds. Number one, the 900 Korok seeds that you can collect <sighs> in that game. Uh, so you collect like little seed seeds of you know these fun little korok monsters critters whatever they are um and you kind of realize at the end that maybe they're the droppings of the little critters because the final reward for collecting all 900 of them is literally like a golden little piece of plop (laughs) which is so funny to me because like clearly nobody was meant to find all 900 of them like at that point you've already maxed out your inventory you've already gotten all the like tangible rewards you're gonna get so just like having this trophy be something that's so completely like it's clearly like a troll Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. joke cracks me up (laughs) so yeah um yeah, I, th- I think it's it's really cool to reward yeah. your longevity. Your most absolutely, players. it's it's if if they want to put in that kind of time, there should be you know something something at the end for them, even if it's like a joke or like a little. Yeah, I mean, if I was a game designer, I, w- I would definitely put in something to reward the long term. Yeah, yeah. The closest absolutely. thing uh, I have to that is be like, the... hey, thank you for playing for uh, nine hundred hours. Here's a, a cute cap. Picture. <laughs> Congratulations. There's cute, a cute, cute cat. Cute cat. I mean, cute cats are worth. I mean, yeah. Pretty much anything. Yeah. But, um, yeah. The closest thing I have for that there is rewards. We just got the ashen mask. You can talk to the ashen fox, who mm-hmm. rewards you based on how many marks that you've recorded in your marks journal. Um, and for the very, very few players who have recorded all 30 marks, there's a very special reward at the end. Mm, so, I wonder what that yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Perhaps we'll get there. Next time. Uh, <laughs> a couple. Yeah, give us like two yeah, or three know, more maybe, episodes. Probably. Um, minimum. <laughs> yeah. But that does seem like a good place to end this episode. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. And we will be back very shortly with more of the content that you love so much you keep coming back for you keep coming back for (laughs) bye everyone